Yield to the gentlelady from, recognize the gentlelady from, excuse me, for, uh, well, we got a unanimous consent request from Mr. Moore. Mr. Chairman, yes, the Wall Street Journal article I'd like to enter into the record says, Republicans eye sweet home for new FBI headquarters in Alabama. All right, uh, without objection, uh, the chair now recognizes the gentlelady for Texas for five minutes, and then we'll take a break, uh, break uh, director. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Director Ray, for your presence here. Thank you to the men and women of the FBI in particular for the work that you've done on gun violence. Uh, and as well, uh, the work that you've done in keeping Americans safe. Let me very quickly uh, move on some issues that have been made a chief part of the work of our friends on the other side of the aisle. Republican members of this committee have spent much time uh, of this Congress claiming that various aspects of the U.S. government have been weaponized against the American people. Director Ray, are you or your staff or auxiliaries weaponizing the FBI against the American people? Absolutely not. Thank you very much. Uh, let me uh, thank you as well for your civil rights work and uh, emphasize that in addition, there have been representations that the FBI exaggerates domestic terrorism reports or data. Uh, certainly, uh, January 6th had its many different storytellers, but that was an act of domestic terrorism. I don't know how you could have exaggerated that as evidenced by the special congressional committee we had. But let's just think of domestic terrorism as it relates to the good men and women of our law enforcement. Take an example in February 2020 in Texas uh, where a uh, white supremacist uh, was uh, engaged in conspiracy involving SWATI, a harassment tactic, and all of the emergency services showed up over and over again. Does Domestic terrorism impact negatively and dangerously on America's law enforcement and first responders. Uh, absolutely, and sometimes law enforcement are themselves the uh, intended victims uh, or targets of domestic violent extremism. Though you have uh, good uh, committed individuals, does the uh, critique is legitimate, that's our job. But does the constant condemnation uh, impact on morale of FBI personnel or those trying to um, join the FBI? Well, look, our people are human beings and nobody likes to see the organization they've dedicated their careers, really their lives to, unfairly criticized. But I will tell you, as I said in my opening statement, that the good news is our people are also tough and resilient. Uh, our attrition is in the low single digits and would be the envy of almost any employer and our recruiting unlike what's happening in law enforcement more Great generally, news. is actually up very significantly. Thank you, and I look forward to it being diverse. Let me start with our whistleblower uh, journey here. Are you familiar with FBI Special Agents Kyle um, Serpin? Uh, I'm familiar with the name. Is that yes? I'm familiar with the name. Yeah. The committee heard testimony that Mr. Serpin was suspended after he mishandled his service weapon and then said he wanted to use two female XBI executives as shooting er, targets. Uh, that was testimony of Jennifer Moore, HR uh, under human resources under oath from the FBI. Mr. Serpin describes himself as a congressional whistleblower, but committee Republicans will not tell us whether he has been in contact with them. Are you familiar with former FBI agents uh, Garrett O'Boyle and Marcus Allen? Again, I'm familiar with the names. Thank you. A boy was suspended for assessing information about an ongoing case and then leaking to the press, and Allen was suspended for interfering in the investigation of a January 6th suspect. Both Allen and O'Boyle testified before the Weaponization Committee in May. Were you aware of that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, they are clearly there for all friends and family to see. I assume they wanted to be seen. Um, do you know who Cash Patel is, if you know? Uh, yes, I know who he is. He's an aide to President Trump, isn't he? Or was an aide? Or is an aide to President Trump? Well, uh, he, he was uh, an individual who served in a number of different roles, both up here on Thank the Hill you. and in the executive branch. Thank you. Here's another picture. It's the checks that Serapin sent to both O'Boyle and Allen. Each check was for $255,194. Let me say that again. These men were paid $255,194 after they testified as so-called whistleblowers. And it should be noted uh, that it says here, as it says, for holding the line. Director, at the time that Serapin and Patel gave Garrett O'Boyle and Marcus Allen these checks, do you happen to know if they were still employees of the FBI? 
Uh, I can't speak to that. I don't know the answer. If they were, 5 CFR 22635, and I'd appreciate if we could get an answer in writing after you go back, whether they were or not, prohibits FBI employees from accepting cash gifts, doesn't it? Well, there are a whole number of rules that would apply to this. Uh, again, I don't want to weigh in on a specific person. But if they were, uh, that rule applies about cash gifts. I'm not aware of a situation in which they could no, appropriately just, accept just cash generally, gifts. Just generally, if, oh. if that applies to FBI agents about not taking cash gifts, is that correct? There are, there are definitely rules that apply to special thank, agents thank accepting you, Mr. cash gifts. Let me just finish this. Can you explain why an FBI agent should not receive cash? But let me uh, move to uh, one that I think is ex extremely important. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, just a moment. And here is what I think is most interesting piece of this whole puzzle. O'Boyle and Allen are represented by an outfit called Empower Oversight. Time's Empower expired. Oversight is run by former Republican staffers. Do you know who else Empower Oversight might represent? I in do any not. way, Mr. Chairman, I have a unanimous consent request. Uh, let me just. Uh, General Lay's time expired. Uh, thank you so very much. Respond. Thank you. Um, the so called IRS uh, whistleblower who Jim Jordan had uh, relied upon. But does anyone need any further proof that these allegations are ginned up, corrupt political stunts advanced by those who don't want to see us follow the law? Finally, Mr. Chairman, here's another person who wants to join you on the 702, but the FBI has begun major reforms, and I think we should recognize that. You've been very kind. I yield back my time. Gentlelady yields back. Uh, I would just point out, my guess is they, they, they got the money because they wanted the money because they had to try to, they're trying to feed their family. They actually uh, haven't received the money. I have unanimous consent request, Mr. Chairman, of a tweet Matthew Foldy uh, put out here during this hearing. Right off the bat, Jerry Nadler lies about whistleblower getting 250000 He says here, Marcus Allen has not received $250,000. He has not received or cashed the check that Kyle Serafin posted online. Enter that in the record. Into the record, we, the, 